Hello friends, this is Gabby Chung with Art and Business Education for Photographers. Today I am going to do a quick portraiture demonstration for those of you who have asked about portraiture. And you know, for anybody else who might be interested in portraiture, of course. Um, I know that some of you are on the fence and I thought that making this little video and kind of showing you the program in action and how I use it what it can do for your images will help you make that decision. So before we begin though, I want to share my history with portraiture. Um, I only recently purchased portraiture. It's been about six months, I would say around there. And I gotta say, I love it. Honestly, best program um, of its kind and actions do not compare to this program. I don't understand, I really don't understand how I have lived for seven years and been in business for seven years without portraiture. It is just, it's really versatile. It's not just for newborns. I also use it in outdoor shoots. I use it for every single shoot um, and just adjust the opacity accordingly. But um, I want you to know why it's taken me seven years. And that is because, of course, I knew about portraiture. Who doesn't know about portraiture? But I always saw portraiture used incorrectly, I think. Um, it was always just uh, these like atrocious images where portraiture was applied so, so heavily that there was no more skin texture. It was just like a porcelain doll or it was applied, or and, it was applied to the entire image and so, so much of the detail was lost um, in the examples that I saw. So I never really pursued it. I never looked into it. I never gave it a fair chance. And that's why it took me seven years to finally purchase it. And I regret not purchasing it sooner I have missed out so many opportunities to get nice, clear, even, just pretty perfect skin um, and just spending a lot more time than I should have had to spend on making skin good. This saves so much time. It's really easy, but you need to know how to use it and how to use it in moderation and how to be selective about what you apply it to. So. I want to just do this demonstration and hopefully this will give you a better idea moving forward. So let me head over to Photoshop. This is our baby image and this image is almost finished. So I have done all of my adjustments to it. I have done all of my artistic edits. Uh, most of you know that I start in Lightroom and then I do my major retouching and you know, the editing, the re all of that stuff in Photoshop. So this is where the bulk of it happens. And I want to just point out how, let's see, let me zoom in, how flaky these little feet are. So this is very typical of newborns. I like to leave flakiness. I don't think, and you know, it's just part of being a newborn. It's very indicative of this stage and of this age. And I feel like parents, when they look back at their images and they see these flaky little feet, it kind of will make them happy. I mean, they are not ever going to have flaky little feet like this again. So I want to leave, you know, that texture and those little flaky feet and flaky areas. Um, but sometimes I want to tone it down. Like she has really, really flaky feet. And I don't want that to be the first thing that an eye goes to when you know you look at the image I want it to be on her sweet little face and you know the composition and all that stuff not the little feet so I do like to tone it down and that's where portraiture comes in you can also see about this image um, oh first let me tell you what I have done to the skin so she had a very noticeable vein on her belly you can see some of the lighter veins here um, babies often have pretty translucent skin so there you can see their veins you can see a lot of splotchiness um, especially in these darker areas you can see right here under her arm under her neck a little bit on her cheek um, her little 
her eyelids. So I want to make sure that you can see what we have started with. And I've done nothing else to the skin besides those. And I just get rid of big blemishes because we can't rely on portraiture to, you know, clean up that big stuff. Otherwise, you're going to put a really high setting on and it's going to look fake. So I just get rid of big blemishes like scratches or if they're like big pimples or, you know, acne or very splotchy red spots. I'll tone that down. Um, for scratches and blemishes and things like that, I use the healing brush over here. Um, and that's really all I did to the skin aside from like the color adjustments. So she was a few shades of red and orange and I have toned that down. Um, so what else? So let us get started. So we will click on our original layer and we will make a duplicate copy. So that is Command J on a Mac. And I'm assuming there is something similar, control maybe, on a PC, Jay. Um, and then we will go to Filter, ImageNomic. Once you install Portraiture, it sticks it right here. So ImageNomic Portraiture, and it will show you, if you look at the settings menu, the preset will be on the last thing you used. So typically, it's not on high, typically it's on smoothing normal. And you can make other adjustments here, but I really feel that portraiture, the makers of portraiture have got this down. Um, I guess the normal is the default, but typically I go with smoothing normal. And um, it just goes up from there to medium to high, glamour tones, high key, low key. So do test these out, um, but again, the ones that I use most are normal, high, sometimes default. It's a little bit less, but I like to just apply it and then tone it down, and I'll show you how I do that. So first, we're going to start with normal. Smoothing normal, we say OK. We let it apply it to that duplicate layer, and you can see, I want you to see what it did. So look at this belly, look under on the dark spots. Let's take it off, let's put it on. You can see how smooth it is and just those splotchy areas are evened out quite a bit. But look at her, you know, eye line, look at her hair. Um, all of that got, I don't know, it's just, it looks like a mushy mess to me. And especially in this blanket, we turn it off, we have detail. We turn it on, it's kind of just, it's blurry, low contrast, it loses a lot of its character. So that is what I don't like. This is what I had seen before, these like super, they're kind of glowy, they look like there's a layer of, I don't know, opaque milk over it. Um, and I just don't like it. So this is why it took me so long to get portraiture. But, of course, you can be very selective about where you put portraiture. So what I do, I click on that duplicate layer that has portraiture applied, I make a mask, and then I will invert it. So when we invert it, you can see here, when we invert it, it takes away the effect. Just in case you are new to masks, I'll explain all this. So some of you probably already know this, but you put it, you um, invert it back and the um, the effect is apparent again and you know we just want that to be black so we look at our mask and that means it's gone um, our layer mask has been inverted so I also want you to look over here so these are your foreground background colors right and let's say it's not on default so your default is black and white and let's say it's not on default you can um, press D on your keyboard, D as in dog, and that sets it back to default. And if you want to switch between white and black, you can press X and that will toggle between those two um, colors, background, foreground. So for now we want it on white because we are going to be painting on this layer mask which is black, right? And so what I do, I only want to apply this to skin. Oh, also, ensure that your brush, um, the hardness is all the way down. You want a nice, soft brush. 
Um, so these lines, the edges of the skin of the body, um, right here in between on her neck, the details of her ear, the lips, nose, edges of the nose, the little nostrils, the eye line, especially the eye line. We don't want that to be fuzzy. Um, headbands, any headbands or accessories, the wraps, the blanket, all of that should be left alone. And especially the hair. Leave the hair alone. Only apply this to the skin. So let me, so it's on a white brush and you can see just how much this helps <laughs> um, and just go around the edges and if you're not applying too much um, skin softening you don't have to have to be that that accurate you do however have to be very very precise when you are applying a lot a lot of um, skin smoothing because you don't want it to be noticeable when you know there's like an abrupt change between smooth skin nothing applied to like the edge of the arm or whatever it is um, so you want to make sure you get that right and I usually do this really quickly because I'm not usually talking and I do it very roughly um, just trying not to get those edges so like the fingers in between the fingers those are details that once you go over them with a skin softener, it makes it, it makes it just look, you know, fake and kind of weird. Um, so you can see here, this is especially important. All this dry skin, the normal takes care of that pretty well. So let me just get in this. So you can see here, let me turn this off. See how dry the skin is actually can you really see it over here don't look at the feet for now but look at that skin the lower leg um, you can just do that and mask it off the edges actually see I went over so what I did just now is you can press the backslash key on your um, keyboard and that will turn on this ruby what is it called red ruby lith mask and what this is, this shows you where you have painted. So where you have applied um, that effect and where you've gone over. So you see, I went over the edges and that's going to make it look blurry and glowy and a mess. So you see here, I went on here. I just went past her foot. So we don't want anything on that blanket. Um, let me, anything on the blanket, on the wraps or any you know, hard detail spots. I usually do leave the belly button because I just want that not to be so pronounced, but you could see here, uh, you can bring it back on the edges and bring it back like that. And if you see you went over, or I went over rather, I went over right there and I can be more precise with, see, I missed this whole spot. And I did go over the lash line a little bit. So I want to bring that back because especially the lash line, we want to make sure those things are sharp and um, they look good. So under the eye without getting the lash line, a little nose. Uh, let's see. Let's turn that back on. This, you could see I missed a whole section here on her belly. Um, and that, if you did have the skin smoothing high that would be a problem you would be able to see that um, but we will tone it down so so you can see like you can just do the fingers roughly and then you know bring back those little details I don't usually go into this much detail but I just want to show you what you can do with this mask this red ruby lith mask um, you can get out of it and see what you have done so it looks so pretty good but and if this is at 100 percent, you can still see a little bit of that splotchiness you can still see her little fuzzy hairs and you know you could you still have some details but for my taste and this will be personal preference so it'll just be what you like for your style and your images but for me i take this down so i select the layer and i throw that opacity 
let's see. So I start at zero just to see where it was. Look at this. So 100, zero. Isn't that great? And the, the blanket, the wrap, everything stays the same. So opacity, I just take it to zero and I start taking it up until, oh, this is not even doing a preview, until I see that, you know, that looks like nice, smooth skin, but it doesn't look fake. It doesn't look plasticky. It's not overdone and I can still see texture. That's what I want. So typically I end up around 50 to 60%. And I will put it at 58, that's close to 60. And look, we turn it off, we turn it on. Off, on. And you can see, especially in the arm, all that splotchy skin is gone. In the belly, and this is at a lower opacity, so it can still work really well at a lower opacity. Um, so this was normal. I'm gonna just rename this layer normal so that we're not confused later and then I'm going to turn it off because I want to show you the preset setting of high and I don't want you to be afraid of using high because you know it's such a harsh harsh effect um, but in the cases where we have really really dry skin or really flaky skin that we want to turn down you might want to use high so let's again go to our original layer and we're going to make a duplicate and we're going to go to File, Image Nomic, Portraiture, go to our settings. Our preset is on normal. We want to change that to high. We want to say OK. And you will see this mess of a mess. It's so, so heavy. In the feet, we still have texture because those are her skin flakes. But everywhere else, we have just lost all the detail of the skin and especially her face. Doesn't this look, I don't know, it looks like it's glowing, like it has like a halo, um, like it, and not in a good way. It just, it doesn't look right to me. It looks very plastic, and this is why I didn't like portraiture. But, again, everything in moderation and everything uh, very selectively. So we would, once again, do a layer mask, invert that layer mask, get our big brush, big soft brush or a small soft brush, and just start coloring. And a little reminder, like I said before, if you are applying a, a lot of effect of portraiture, then you need to be much more precise because the transitions are going to be much more pronounced if, you know, there's a lot of skin softening and then no skin softening um, so you want to get really close to those edges right um, and that's only if you're applying a lot again we don't apply that much but if you ever do have to that's what you would do so literally you would have to take this to the edge if you were being precise because you were adding a lot of it and then again to the edge like even closer than that um, you want to just make sure that there is a hard line because that's what is going to keep it looking more realistic and just cleaner and sharper. Um, so I would just color everything and I'm going to do this uh, a little less precise because this is just the demo. This is not you know, what our client is going to get and I just want to show you what I do with it. So belly, let's say we got the whole belly. And then this is especially what I want you to see. So this dry skin, right? And the feet. Dry skin is gone. And if you keep it within the lines of those edges, it actually looks fine. It does not look like a blurry mess, a fake, you know, fake skin that... And this would take, you know... Aside from adding some blur, this would actually take quite a while to correct otherwise. And look at this. Look at this lower leg. So let's turn it off and let's turn it on. You can see how well that worked. Um, so then let's get these feet and you can see how it does really tone down the flakiness, but we can still see the flakiness. And of course, we are going to lower the opacity. So I know it looks, 
um, a little bit harsh and a little bit overdone right now, but we are going to lower that in a bit. Um, so you can see, look at this leg, super, super dry. It's going to start flaking in a few days. <laughs> um, and this really does save the day. But when you look at it overall, this is a very soft, too soft. It's like mush, uh, no details in the skin. Look at her face. There's just nothing there. It's too perfect. And that, while we want, you know, perfection, we don't want it to be unrealistic perfection that looks just weird. I don't like this. So this one, I would lower the opacity. Look at that. That's at zero. And let's see where this takes us. Um, maybe somewhere around 50. And then you can see, oops, let's scroll back up. You can see on the feet that effect it's just subtle but it really does tone it down so what you can do um, if you have a baby like this and you want to lower you know some or mask some of that flakiness you can do um, one layer uh, on high on the high setting and then just mask it on to the feet and do the rest of the body in normal because you know it, it doesn't need all that skin smoothing it's pretty smooth as it is um, if you wanted to do that uh, you have that option too so I just wanted to show you that this is on high and let's rename this layer so we're not confused this is on high at 40 percent and let me zoom in because it's easier to see everything. So on high, it just does a nice subtle smooth because it's at 40%, but obviously we can take that up and it is much more dramatic. And then this is our normal. So our normal is what I generally stick to, but do not be afraid of high because it can be very useful when you have some problematic skin. And... Um, I just actually first, or also, I want to show you how this affects hair. I don't know if I did this already, but this is not good. We don't want this. It just looks super soft. It kind of looks like like camera shake, like if we, um, we did not take such a nice picture and we're trying to save it, or it kind of reminds me of like a really high ISO image that you've um, reduced the noise on and it's just kind of soft and yucky um, so this is what not the high one I would usually probably leave it on normal I like those skin flakes so again that is personal preference um, this is the finished image uh, I will post a before and after on the website along with some other little tips and this video and I believe that's it. This is the website. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box and I will answer them as best as I can. Um, if you decide that this is a program that will help your images and it will work for you and you decide to purchase, please use one of my links that I've included. Um, use my links and they are affiliate links so I would be forever grateful and this is how I will continue to make these videos for you so it's very easy you just click on the link and it'll take you to their page it doesn't cost you anything else it's exactly is exactly the same um, if they have sales which they don't have often um, then you can still do the codes and all of that fun stuff so that is it. I hope you have learned a thing or two. And if you have questions again, please let me know. Have a great day and bye-bye.